Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this MCAT style problem, we're talking about the difference between how gravity affects acceleration on the Earth versus on the Moon. And so obviously because it's going to be different, it changes how we calculate freefall problems. So they talk about an astronaut jumping up on the Moon and they say that our initial velocity is mostly determined by the strength of our leg muscles, which isn't going to be affected by the different gravity acceleration. It will change how high you can jump though. So they ask if an astronaut can jump straight up to a height of half of a meter on the Earth, how high could he jump on the moon? So how we want to approach this is first we need to figure out how fast he can jump on the Earth so we can use that same initial velocity on the moon. We don't have any sort of a time given though, so the kinematic equation that we'll be using, you're probably familiar with this by now, is v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2a delta y. We want to isolate this for the initial velocity, of course. So let's subtract both sides of the equation by 2a delta y. So we have the vi squared is equal to v final squared minus 2a delta y. To isolate v initial, we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation. Let's come over here for some space. So we have velocity initial is equal to the square root of v final squared minus 2a delta y. Making a list of the variables that we have, we know the acceleration on Earth is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and the delta Y they say on the Earth for the astronaut jumping is half of a meter. So plugging those in, we get the final velocity squared is going to be zero. So we have the square root of negative two times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times the delta Y of a positive half of a meter. Square root of negative 2 times negative 9.8 times 0.5. So the initial velocity on the Earth is 3.13 meters per second. So now when we go to the moon, will you be using the exact same formula? V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2a delta y, and we want to solve for the delta y, so let's move the initial velocity over. v final squared minus v initial squared is equal to 2a delta y. Divide both sides by 2a. We have delta y is equal to the final velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared all over 2a. Because we're only looking at the first half of the jump, he comes up, stops, and then comes back down. The final velocity is going to be zero. We know the initial velocity from up here, so that goes away. So delta y is equal to the negative initial velocity squared divided by two times the acceleration. Delta y, when we plug in our values, will have negative 3.13 squared divided by two times the acceleration. Now they say it's one sixth, so we'll use negative 9.8 meters per second squared, but we'll divide it by six to account for the change. So we have negative 3.13 squared, that will be divided by two times negative 9.8 divided by six. So the height that they can jump on the moon is 2.999, so delta y is going to be three meters, and looking at our answers, that will be b. So now let's move on to the second of the three MCAT style problems. And in this question, they ask us that on Earth, an astronaut can safely jump to the ground from a height of one meter, and her velocity when reaching the ground is slow enough that it won't cause injury, so what height could the astronaut safely jump to the ground on the moon. So the point that we'll be using that kind of brings this question together is whatever the safe landing speed will be on Earth, it's going to be the exact same safe landing speed on the moon, but it will be a different delta y. We're going to use the same equation for both of them. The one that we'll be using is v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2a delta y. So it's the same as the previous problem. The initial velocity we're going to say is zero because it's at the height of the jump. 
so that can go away. The final velocity that we're looking for is right before she lands. So we have v final squared is equal to 2a delta y. Now what we want to do with this is we want to write two equations, one for Earth and one for the Moon, and then we'll actually set them equal to each other because we want it to be the same safe landing speed. So the final velocity for the Earth, because we're using this equation right here for both, is equal to 2 times the acceleration of the Earth times the delta y of the Earth. We'll do the same thing for the Moon. So we have the final velocity for the moon, and we'll square that. It will be equal to 2 times the acceleration of the moon times the delta y of the moon. So now we want the final velocity to be the exact same. So these are equivalent to each other. 2 times the acceleration of the earth times the delta y of the earth is equal to 2 times the acceleration of the moon times the delta y of the moon. So we're essentially setting this equation up to use ratios. It's helpful to use the two different colors for this. So I'll try to keep them consistent and you'll see what I'm doing here. Both sides of the equation have 2. So we can simplify that out of our equation here. Now we want to divide both sides of the equation by one of these values. And same thing with the other to set them up as a ratio. So let's first divide both sides of the equation by the acceleration of the moon. So let's come over here and write this. So we have the acceleration of the earth divided by the acceleration of the moon. And then this value is multiplied by the delta y of the earth. And it's equal to the delta y of the moon. And this is, of course, what we're trying to solve for. We're trying to figure out what height will give us the same safe landing speed on the Earth. And so now we have all of these numbers, so let's plug them in. So the acceleration of the Earth is, of course, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We'll divide that by the acceleration of the moon, which we said was negative 9.8 meters per second squared, divided by 6. And then we'll multiply that by the delta y on the Earth, which was 1 meter. And that will equal the delta y of the moon. So negative 9.8 meters per second squared divided by negative 9.8 meters per second squared divided by 6. Multiplied by 1, of course, which we could leave out because it's the same. So the safe landing height on the moon will be 6 meters. Right here is letter B, 6 meters. And now let's move on to the last of the three MCAT style problems. So for the last one here, they tell us that on Earth, an astronaut throws a ball straight upward and that it stays in the air for a total time of three seconds before it hits the ground. And so they want us to say, if we throw it with the same initial speed on the moon, how long until it would hit the ground? So this is similar to what we've done before. We need to figure out what the initial speed is as he throws the ball and then use that to plug it in for the moon aspect. The kinematic equation that we can use to solve for the time is x final is equal to x initial plus velocity initial times time plus one half the acceleration times the time squared. The x initial for this equation will be zero. And the x final will actually also be zero as well. Now we want to isolate the initial velocity, so let's subtract both sides of the equation with the 1 half at squared. So we have velocity initial times time is equal to a negative 1 half acceleration times the time squared. We want to isolate v, so if we divide both sides of the equation by time, that will cancel, and one of the times will cancel out here. So now when we rewrite it, we have the velocity initial for the Earth is equal to a negative one-half the acceleration times the time. The velocity initial of the Earth is equal to a negative one-half times the acceleration on the Earth is a negative 9.8 meters per second squared times a time of three seconds. So we have negative 0.5 times negative 9.8 times 3 gives us a initial velocity on the Earth of a 14.7 meters per second. So we'll round that to 15. So 15 meters per second. 
You can keep it at the 14.7 if you would like, or rounding. I'm going to use the 15. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use this exact same formula right here. So let's rewrite it. So we have velocity initial is equal to negative one half times the acceleration times the time. Only in this case, we want to figure out how long is it in the air before it hits the ground. So let's isolate t. So we'll multiply both sides of the equation by negative 2, which is the same as negative 2 over 1, or the reciprocal of this. So that will cancel. And now we have negative 2 times the, the velocity initial. And it's going to be the same initial velocity from the Earth to the moon. So that will be the same right here. And it will be equal to acceleration times time. Divide both sides of the equation by acceleration. So now we have time is finally equal to negative 2 times the initial velocity divided by the acceleration for the moon. So we have negative 2 times the initial velocity, which we found was 15 meters per second. And then we'll divide that by the acceleration of the moon, which we've done as negative 9.8 divided by 6. So it will be in the air for 18.4 seconds, which we can round to 18 seconds. And if we come up here to our answers, again, we have B for 18 seconds.